This video is brought to you by glowing skin and good hair. You massage your edges. You and your edges need to have a daily conversation and a daily relationship where you visit your edges. My lips are dry. Hey babes, it's Chilekwa. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. And if you're new to this channel, you can show that you like it here by liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment down below. And without further ado, let us jump right into this video. Like your bell cut. Before we jump right into this video, I'd like to do some post notification shout outs. Whoo, it has been a hot minute. It's been like a long while since I've done like a sit down video. It's also been a long while since I did like a Q&A answering questions on my channel, so I'm so happy to be back and doing this. I voluntarily offered myself up on Instagram asking you to ask me questions about natural hair and I'm here today to answer those questions. So yeah guys, let's jump right into it. Oh my gosh, quick life update. Like everything's been going good, okay? Just know that your girl has been doing good. In fact, this video is brought to you by glowing skin and good hair. I sent you guys some questions on Instagram. You guys answered, like you asked your questions and I'm here to help to the best of my ability. Quick disclaimer, I am not a professional. This is just based on my experience and how I've managed to grow my hair to where it is now. I've been natural for about seven years now. My healthy hair journey has been about two or three years, but we're still on this journey. We're still learning. You guys can come learn with me. So the first question, well, this one wasn't a question. Just says no question. You're gorgeous, that's all. Thanks. <laughs> if you see me looking this side, it's because I have my laptop here and this is where I put all the questions. The next question is, how often do you wash your hair? And the short answer is I wash it about two or three times a month. But to go into detail, I cleanse it once a month. I know there's so much controversy about co-washes, but yeah, I co-wash my hair midweek, like in between my washes. So I'll have like two co-washes before my next wash day. I used to wash my hair once a month, but I really noticed a difference when I added the little in-between quick washes. So it's really helped with my moisture retention and it's just helped my hair to be less dry. I posted my updated wash day before this video, so you guys best to go watch it. And that's like the full wash where I detox and cleanse and all that. I'm not gonna ramble, but yeah. Moving on to the next question. When you experience heat damage, do you have to chop your hair off? Well, when you experience heat damage, I'm gonna give from my experience, I almost chopped my hair off. I think it was this side of my hair, if I'm not mistaken. I have my hair parted down the middle, but like this side always seems to thrive more. I just don't know why. I guess my hair is thicker on this side and not as thick on that side. But anyway, that's not the point. But anyway, I had more heat damage on this side. And what had happened was the heat damage wasn't so bad. It was more towards my ends. So I just kept trimming those ends as my hair was growing each month. And eventually I got rid of all the damaged um, parts. And yeah, I got my natural hair back. For those who are wondering how you can tell if your hair is heat damaged, basically your hair won't be curly anymore. You won't have a curl pattern. It will be much looser or it will be straight. So then you know your hair is like heat damaged. It really depends on how damaged your hair is. Like I said, it was only just this section, like this front section and not everywhere else in my hair was fine. I've also experienced heat damage in like my crown area, but I did the same thing where I just trimmed it. So it just depends on you and how you are seeing your hair. But if you feel like the damage is extreme and it's all over your hair, then I just feel like the wisest thing to do is cut your hair. If it's drastic for you to like make a big chop, then just be cutting it in stages as your hair is growing every month. Just, you know, trim it. It, 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 it hurts less, especially if you're attached to your hair. Hi love, kindly asking where you got that automated spray bottle, water bottle thing. Um, so my spray bottle, I got it from Nappy and Happy. I once purchased one from Zatu as well. And the other one, oh yeah, I only have two, but the other one was a gift. It was gifted to me and it was from Product Nova. So I have two spray bottles. So one was a, one was a gift 
and the other one I got for myself. Zatu, this product Nova, there's Nappy and Happy, and I think Diva Hat also stocks them. And they range from, let me just say 120 to about 250, depending on where you're gonna get them from. Your hair is goals, what's your secret? Um, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, girl, thank you. Shout out to Mboni Natural. Um, she actually has a channel on YouTube, so I'll link it down below. You guys should go subscribe, follow her on Instagram as well. What is my secret? I like this question at the same time, I don't like it because I feel like there's no big secret. Everything that you need to grow your hair is out there on the internet. It's a combination of using the right products for your hair. And when I say the right products for your hair, I don't mean that there's like a magical product out there that can guarantee you hair growth. Use products that promote the health of your hair. So for example, you know how naturals are always fussing about whether the shampoo is sulfate free or the conditioner is silicone free and all those kind of things. Those are the things that you need to be concerned about if you're gonna have a healthy hair journey. So for me, it's not even about like if there's a secret or a key or whatever, but here's the thing about ass and black hair. I'm just gonna talk about black hair and being a type four hair haired person but mostly like 4b 4c our hair is the driest on the spectrum so it's like you know the key is to make sure that your hair doesn't get too dry to the point of breakage or to make sure that your ends are always protected and not weak enough to break because like i said it's the driest therefore it's the weakest and yeah more prone to breakage so for me the key is just it's in your ends really because let me tell you something as long as you are alive your hair is growing hair grows out of your scalp all the time so if we can if we've established that hair is always growing then just make sure that the ends are not breaking off as fast as your hair is growing I've said this before in a previous video and I'll say it again. For me, the secret is in length retention and the secret is in making sure your ends are good, like are healthy and stuff. And if you have healthy ends, they will not break, they will not fall off. And as your hair is growing, you will actually see the growth. It's not a question, but it's just a statement. It's like I give up on my hairline. With your hairline, you just have to be patient. You have to be consistent. And there is a way of redeeming the hairline. But I noticed that the more like people see progress on their hairlines, the more they want to now do the hairstyles that that break the hairline. And then you're back at square one again, and then you start giving up on your hairline. So ma'am, ma'am, let's resolve today in our hearts to do something and make a change for that hairline because now I still believe in your hairline. A lot of women need to accept their hairlines. And what I mean by that is that you need to understand that you have a if you have a fragile hairline and your hairline is very soft and it breaks off easily and it you know it moves easily then you need to treat your hairline according to its needs so like don't do tight hairstyles i once challenged someone not to do like a tight hairstyle or even just braid their hair for up to a year if they were gonna do hairstyles i always encourage them to do like hairstyles with their own hair because that's not gonna cause too much tension on their edges i also encourage them to do regular scalp massages you know the thing with hair and hair growth you just have to be consistent if you're not consistent and you're not even committed to the health and growth of your hair I don't know what to tell you but like with every journey there has to be effort if you're saying you're gonna go on a journey and you're standing in one place and expecting things to move you're gonna be stuck in that place just ask yourself how committed am i to my journey how committed am i to my hair growth journey do i really want this to work the effort that you put in to like fixing your hair situation it's gonna show in the results. How often do you trim? I like this question. I've changed my trimming regimen to three months. It used to be six because I just feel like my hair has more needs now. So it's been working. I feel like my hair is stronger. It tangles less. It's actually done something for my curl definition. And my lifestyle is so busy. So I feel like the more I have regular trims, it's better for my hair. How often should one deep condition? I like this question as well and a lot of natural hair gurus are gonna tell you like oh you need to dish deep condition like once a week yeah once a week and all that i would encourage it if you have the time to deep condition once a week do it but please just learn the difference between a deep condition and approaching treatment because for high porosity hair 
they need more protein so protein treatments can work even monthly for high porosity hair but low porosity hair is already rich in protein so you if you're gonna do a protein treatment thinking it's a deep condition and you do it weekly that's bad for your hair it's gonna make your hair too brittle and then break off and then you're gonna be like oh i was deep conditioning weekly but then it's still breaking so once you establish the difference between a deep conditioner and a protein treatment you're good and then deep conditioning please even if you can do it weekly do it weekly but for me my lifestyle does not allow it however i am switching up my regimen to at least deep condition bi-weekly so let's see how that goes and i'll be back with an update and i'll just share how that goes deep conditioning helps especially because our hair is brittle and all that so we need the moisture and the moisture can only be gotten from a deep conditioner oh as i'm saying all these things you guys better follow me on instagram because I usually show how I do my deep condition treatments and you can find them on my Instagram reels but I will post them on my shorts as well but I'm just saying follow me on Instagram you know what I'm saying my hair really isn't doing the best it's not a question but that's a statement my hair really isn't doing the best I get you I feel you girl like believe it or not and I'm not saying this to sound ungrateful but I also feel my hair is not doing the best I don't think I have retained any length or maybe i have but i don't think i have retained any length in this year or maybe because i've done a lot of major trims and i'm still gonna trim some more but it's not about the length anymore because i just want my hair to be healthy and then hopefully the length can follow and then we can continue on our journey to waist length i'm gonna ask these questions again are you committed to changing your hair regimen are you committed to your hair growth journey how serious are you about it how much effort are you willing to put in to growing your hair because some people think that you just wake up and your hair grows this it's all in the genes conversation guys i'm not even gonna go into that if your hair really isn't doing the best you need to now change up the techniques and the methods that you're using to grow your hair it means that they're probably not working you need to listen to your hair understand your hair's love language oh i like that yes understand your hair's love language see how your hair reacts to most of these treatments and do better i'm really struggling with growing my edges any help okay so i already addressed the one with the edges i don't care how cute the hairstyle is avoid that's number one number two do hairstyles do more hairstyles with your natural hair try it for six months or even a year you're going to see a difference i just want you to take the tension off your edges okay take the tension off your edges wigs avoid tight wigs if you're gonna wear a wig i wish it could be satin lined or something but like Try to lay off anything that just interferes with your edges or sits on your edges or touches your edges avoid can you do that great and then i want you to create a routine where you massage your edges you and your edges need to have a daily conversation and a daily relationship where you visit your edges i'm not even asking for too much i'm asking for 15 minutes a day of scalp massaging with an oil i would recommend a light oil but if you want you can even use castor oil because it works fast if you can find an oil that has peppermint or any minty kind of situation or menthol like anything to stimulate the follicles and the you know your hair glands so that they can push uh, for growth then do it um my hair is breaking what can i use well thank you for that question because breakage like i said is because our hair is naturally dry okay naturally dry that makes it the weakest so i'm gonna ask a question what type of hairstyles are you doing that's first that's number one because i used to do like low buns and then i would even tuck them in at the ends and every time i'm taking down my van i would see like little pieces of hair falling out and that's because there was so much like like you know when you tie a bun and then you fold it and then you put like a little string around there so that point where the string would actually wrap around the ends that was creating a weak point in my hair and that was making my ends fall off so i stopped doing those like each time i do a bun i would just leave it like i would not do like the bun that i used to do i would just tie it up in a ponytail and just let it be free or if i want i would just like tuck my ends in or braid it up and or twist it up while it's moisturized and stuff so that my ends are not really 
under pressure i don't even know if that's the correct word but yes be very mindful of the hairstyles that you're doing um for for your ends are your ends always exposed and all that kind of thing number two do you moisturize hmm? do you moisturize okay and by moisturize i don't mean because i know there's this misconception that oils moisturize hair they don't they do not honey moisture is water so anything anytime you hear moisture water look at the products that you use do they have water as the first ingredient first or second ingredient then you know that that is a water-based product it's super hydrating and it's very good for your hair and i would also avoid very harsh shampoos because what do they do they dry out our hair another thing that would help with breakage is regular deep conditioning because that boosts the moisture content in your hair i want you to try this like when you actually do your wash gym first of all do a pre-poo so pre-poo if you haven't seen how i pre-poo i did a video on it i might link it up somewhere here so yeah pre-poo and then shampoo and then after the shampoo deep condition after deep conditioning add in your conditioner then i'm talking about a rinse out conditioner rinse it out then after rinsing out the conditioner you can add in a leave-in conditioner after adding a leave-in conditioner get like a creamy product that you can use like a hair moisturizer or hair lotion that you can use and then after that you can seal all that moisture with an oil so most people don't know how to moisturize and they don't know like the techniques and once you have actually mastered the techniques of moisturizing hair please follow me on instagram like i have all this information on instagram so like you can follow me on instagram as well i will be posting some here right like follow me on instagram because <laughs> that's where it's at because i've shown videos on of how i moisturize even like while my hair's in a protective hairstyle and all that i show it so like how is your moisturizing game like are you moisturizing well once you master the technique of moisturizing then you got that locked the other thing you need to do is trim it's weird that for you to have to grow your hair you need to trim some off the science behind trimming is basically that your you have to get rid of the weaker dead ends that are not making your hair progress the more you hold on to those ends the more it's just they just keep breaking your hair and what split ends do is they travel higher up the shaft up, up your hair shaft and they cause more damage and they make the rest of your hair weak and they'll keep breaking so one moment you have tailbone length and then the next moment you're back at cheek bone length because those damaged ends were neglected to that point so if you're experiencing a lot of breakage that probably means that you have damaged ends which needs to be gotten rid of so you need to do a trim and most probably a haircut but they have the whoever is going to cut your hair if it's going to be yourself or the person I'd recommend a professional if the professional is going to trim your hair they are most likely going to trim up to the point where they see no splitting and no damage and that is a fresh start for your hair and once you've gotten that professional trim is where you can now start implementing these things is how do you combat hair browning gradually having a brown tint um so I watched a video once which talked about like hair discoloring and all that and i think it had something to do with like a loss of melanin because like i think our melanin also has something to do with the amount of pigment that you'll have in your hair like whether you'll end up with darker hair or a lighter brown it all has to do with um the amount of melanin i had no idea but something like that anyway and um there are some products they contain vitamins and nutrients that actually boost uh, the melanin content in your blood or something like that and actually help with darker pigments or darker shades of hair and if you all of a sudden start experiencing browning of hair it could be a, a number of factors probably stress diet and the same thing that i mentioned like the changing or reduction of uh, pigment in your body and all that kind of thing so first i think the first thing to do is to establish what actually is causing the browning did you like maybe change a product did you use a different product how has your lifestyle been have you been stressed and all that kind of thing i'm no expert by the way i'm just like saying things based on, on what i read and seen and watched and all that um you can actually visit a i almost said gynecologist you can actually visit a, a dermatologist and see if there's a, any health factor that is causing this i think i know i've used castor oil and it has actually made my hair a lot darker so i don't know how that actually helped so you can try that i know amla oil also helps in darkening the hair 
and it has to be pure amla though not with the mineral oils and all that kind of things because that's not really healthy for your scalp and hair and if you can try natural henna as well if you know how to do henna treatments that can help because at least it's a natural dye and it'll actually deposit a darker pigment into your hair i'm not sure of the permanence obviously you'll have to do it continuously if you're trying to look for if you're trying to get darker hair so i hope that answers your question but i'm i think you just need to do more research i can do more research on it and maybe try to do a video about it but yeah i've actually seen this i've actually seen it happen and it's actually pretty normal ish i think uh, as in you're not alone kind of thing how does one moisturize their hair weekly in a protective style so what i usually do when i'm in a protective style like braids or stuff i always make sure somehow water touches my hair so i always spray my scalp i know that's weird but i do because i just feel like my scalp needs moisture and then right after that that's when i will go ahead and add my oil and then i'll just massage my scalp and do that and then i would always have braid spray like you should always have braid spray and a braid spray that has water as one of the first ingredients and I mean top three ingredients when I say first ingredient and then it should also have glycerine as one of the main ingredients as well because that always keeps the moisture content a one but just don't neglect your hair while it's in a protective hairstyle so always have a braid spray or, or even just water honestly if you just use water um, and just make sure some mist or some water just touches your hair and that's how I do it always no matter the protective hairstyle and when i'm in twist i actually moisturize more just as i would if my hair was out so like regularly daily or every other day um hair growth tips for 4c high porosity hair i would say i know the recommended moisturizing method for high porosity hair is the loc method so that's liquid oil and cream and that's because high porosity hair loses moisture very quickly even though it gains moisture quickly so you have to make sure that you kind of seal in that moisture and that it doesn't like escape easily because it has that it tends to have that tendency other than that every other tip that i give or that you've heard for growing hair kind of applies to high porosity hair and i would say you 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 can do more protein treatments if you have high porosity hair because high porosity hair kind of does need the the moisture the protein it's more prone to frizz so just make sure you use products that control frizz i think i need to do a video more on porosity just so that people can you know try to determine their porosity and see how to treat their hair based on their porosity but at the end of the day the general rules kind of still apply it's really just boils down to how you moisturize your hair when it comes to the porosity every other method of taking care of the hair is pretty much the same not a question but your hair is always giving girl thank you <laughs> thank you um i do get bad hair days but mm, you know <laughs> okay wow she like what take a compliment i always do this thing where if someone gives me a compliment i kind of like give them a reason they shouldn't give me a compliment but anyway thank you so much i appreciate it i'm so humbled and the last and final question i have low porosity and i have no idea how to care on my natural hair walk me through it like I'm gonna do like I said I'm gonna do a video on porosity and I will just go into depth but the one tip that I can give you right now is that moisturizing so for low porosity hair you have to use the LCO method that is liquid cream and oil I have low porosity hair and that is the method that I use actually I have a whole playlist dedicated to how I care for my hair so you can just try to like steal pages from my book because my hair is actually low porosity so the methods that I use are based on my hair's porosity and it actually works follow me on Instagram as well I don't have any time to set it but just follow me on Instagram it's gonna help you because like exactly there's so much more i'm so excited to share on this channel like you guys are not even ready like you're not even ready for the news that's about to hit this channel and no i'm not pregnant but anyway guys thank you so much for watching don't forget to like subscribe and comment and i will see you guys in my next video bye